Hello, everybody. This is Wesley Ferris, and the report that I am about to bring to you coming from AboveScience.com is very disturbing. It's very graphic in its wording, and it's very heartbreaking to know that uh, this is happening, and more so that this is happening in the very country that I am living in by, by countless numbers. It has to do with abortion, and again, it is extremely graphic in this wording. Um, abortion worker remembers finding a half dozen rotting babies in the garbage. The article says, I'm going to say in advance that this article is graphic and disturbing, even more so than my other articles, so be warned. Pro-choice activists often say that abortion must be legal to keep it safe. And I just want to say about this right here. Pro-choice activists, those who are for abortion, who have fought to make abortion legal, say they do they do so so that someone will not go out and um, abort their baby in an inhumane way. In other words, murder their baby in an inhumane way, uh, as if there is a humane way to murder your baby. Um, so either way you look at it, legal, not legal, you're looking at murder here, and that is exactly what abortion is. The article continues... Um, they oppose any effort to regulate abortion clinics. Planned Parenthood led the fight against clinic regulations in Texas, with Wendy Davis being hailed as a hero for attempting to defeat such legislation. The book Lime 5 documents many, many instances of abortion malpractice. There is almost no limits to the number of articles I could write citing examples from this book. However, this series of articles focuses on the testimonies of former clinic workers. Therefore, I'm going to highlight a quote by a former clinic worker who was originally interviewed in 1992 by pro-life activist Rachel McNair. And this is where it gets graphic, folks. Very graphic. The clinic worker told McNair, One Saturday, another employee and I were working. We were closing up and we went down the back hallway to get the garbage. Well, he smelled this awful smell. It wasn't coming from the garbage. So he opened the door to the storage room. Inside the storage room was a bunch of feet. A bunch of fetuses. Wrapped up in blue paper and the gloves that had been sitting there for, I would say, at least a week. There were maggots. It stunk like I couldn't even describe. We gagged and closed the door. There were at least six or seven of these fetuses just sitting there, just rotting away. According to McNair, the clinic worker said that this was not an isolated incident. The doctor she worked for often left the babies of aborted bodies, uh, the, the bodies of aborted babies lying around the clinic. The uh, Maccabre story is reminiscent of Kermit Gosnell, who kept parts of aborted babies around his office. Gosnell had aborted babies in his refrigerator, as well as the feet of aborted children preserved in jars. I can't begin to imagine why the abortionist in this case left the bodies of the aborted children around to decay. Was it mere sloppiness? Was he too lazy to clean up in the clinic? Did he not want to bother disposing of the corpses as required by the Board of Health? Was he keeping them as trophies? Regardless of the reasons, having rotting babies full of maggots in a medical facility is absolutely appalling. Surgeries were conducted in that clinic dozens a day. If it was a typical clinic, we can only imagine what it was like for the women who went there. We can only imagine the smells that they were exposed to in the clinic, smells which the clinic workers had to endure on a daily basis. And I would just like to add that these workers should not be working there. They should have quit their jobs. If there is a clinic performing abortion, the entire clinic should be shut down and every worker there should be ashamed of themselves for working there. The article continues, why was this clinic never shut down? We could just as easily ask how Kermit Gosnell 
was able to practice for so long, flying below the radar before he was stopped. Abortion clinics function with a lack of oversight that makes it possible for some to operate for a long time with health violations. You can read some examples of bad conditions at abortion clinics here. So if you're reading this article at AboveScience.com, you can uh, see more examples of this happening in abortion clinics from this website. There have been so many cases of abortion clinics that were cited for health violations that I can't list them all in one article. A little research will turn up scores of cases where abortion clinics were shut down because of filthy and unsafe conditions. Sometimes it is clinic workers who come forward and reveal just how bad abortion clinics can be. This is Wesley Ferris. Take care.